वेलकम टू रा ऑनलाइन टूडेज टॉपिक इज यूरोजेनेटल फिस्तुलास सो फिस्तुला इज डिफाइंड एज एबनॉर्मल कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन यूरिनरी एंड जेनेटल ऑर्गन सो फर्स्ट रूल इज दैट यूरिन कैन एस्केप फ्रॉम यूरेटर इन टू द ट्यूब्स यूट्रस सर्विक्स और वेजाइना इट कैन लीक फ्रॉम ब्लैडर इन टू द ट्यूब यूट्रस सर्विक्स एंड वेजाइना एंड फ्रॉम यूरेथ्रा द कम्युनिकेशन इज ऑलवेज इन द वेजाइना दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द एनाटमिकल अरेंजमेंट second rule is that whenever you are naming a fistula the first part is vesico that is a part of the urinary tract and vaginal which is a part of the genital tract so urinary tract is named first and then the genital tract is named classification according to the size so fistulas can be small less than 2 cm medium 2 to 3 cm large 4 to 5 cm and extensive more than 6 cm fistulas in diameter according to the site of fistulas we can differentiate them as high fistulas mid fistulas and low fistulas so high fistulas can be um, juxta cervical or walled vesico uterine fistulas mid vaginal fistulas can be there in the vagina then low fistulas can be at the level of bladder neck and these can have a urethral involvement or there can be a complete bladder neck loss or circumferential fistulas can be there in which there is an annular loss of bladder neck and then there can be massive vaginal fistulas massive vaginal fistulas can involve all high mid and low vaginal fistulas and it may also include ureters in addition now simple fistulas can be there and complex fistulas simple fistulas are small usually 2 to 3 cm in size they are separa trigonal there is usually no history of pelvic malignancy or radiation the vaginal length is normal the tissues are healthy and we have a good access in complex vagina vesico vaginal fistulas they are usually large fistulas more than 3 cm they involve the trigon or they lie below the trigon patient can give history of malignancy or radiation the vaginal length is short and they are associated with scarring and they can involve urethra vas bladder neck ureter intestine and there can be a previous attempt for repair if all these things are there we call them as complex fistulas so commonest type is vesico vaginal then comes the uretro vaginal uretro vaginal fistulas vesico cervical fistulas uretro cervical fistulas and uretro uterine fistulas which are rare now the commonest fistula is the one which we'll discuss in detail so vesico vaginal is an abnormal opening between the bladder anteriorly and vagina posteriorly and this results in a continuous and intermittent unremitting urinary incontinence sometimes you can put a, a urinary catheter and it will come out through the vagina so it can be congenital which is rare and congenital fistulas are usually associated with other urogenital malformations and they can be acquired fistulas can be traumatic inflammatory malignant or radiation necrosis so traumatic fistulas can be obstetrical trauma or a surgical trauma obstetrical trauma include the necrotizing obstetrical fistulas the traumatic obstetrical fistulas necrotic as happens in case of prolonged labor and obstructed labor traumatic obstetrical fistulas as happen in case of instrumental deliveries like decapitation and scissors and forceps and Uh, surgical trauma as happens in case of gynec surgeries or they can be direct trauma in case of road traffic accidents inflammatory diseases include tuberculosis bilharziasis malignancies include genital malignancies and radiation necrosis include the radiotherapy treatment modalities now first is the necrotizing obstetric fistulas it happens because of the prolonged compression of soft tissue between the head and brim of a narrow pelvis and these obstetrical fistulas they are basically result because of the ischemia and pressure necrosis and sloughing of base of the bladder because for a very long time the bladder tissue is caught between the uh, fetal head and the symphysis pubis urethra also gets involved because it is at the level of bladder neck sloughing will take some time to separate so patient would have been labor 5 to 7 days ago and today is the time she is getting incontinence because sloughing necrosis takes 5 to 7 days and these uh, surrounded by extensive dense fibrosis traumatic obstetrical fistula happen because of direct injury to bladder by sharp instrument like perforator or decapitation hook 
and very rarely it can be forceps and traumatic obstetrical fistula is usually present immediately after the uh, labor. And traumatic fistulas uh, uh, happen because of surgery during vaginal operations like anterior colporephy and during abdominal like hysterectomy. Direct uh, trauma can happen to the bla bladder in case of road traffic accidents. Then inflammatory diseases like bilharyiasis, tuberculosis, pelvic abscess which may open bladder and anteriorly and vagina posteriorly. Malignant neoplasms of cervix of malignancies of bladder, malignancies of vagina by direct invasion of bladder wall and then ulceration. Radiation necrosis can lead to fistulas because of sloughing of bladder and the um, complication of malignancies associated. Now, fistulas present as involuntary leakage of urine. On physical examination, we need to look at the external genitalia, see the leakage of urine, the excoriation of the surrounding perineal skin. We need to do a perspiculum examination and what we see there is a pool of urine inside the vagina and sometimes it is able to see the site and the number of fistulas inside the vagina on sim speculum examination. So patients usually complain of incontinence which can be completely incontinent or partial incontinence. So complete incontinence is usually large fistulas, partially incontinent person is usually a small or a high fistulas. And the patient comes with uh, symptoms of vulval pruritus and burning pain because of the continuous discharge of urine. Patient can complain of cystitis because of ascending infection from the vulva. And to confirm it, we take the patient from the patient the history of difficult labor or a instrumental delivery and when did she start leaking, whether immediately after the labor pains or five to seven days after the labor pain. Then we do a pervaginum examination and palpate for the fistulas. Large fistulas can be felt and small fistulas cannot be felt but the surrounding fibrosis is usually palpable.